Hello. This week we have a text from the Gospel according to John, chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. Uh, the famous parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector or the publican, depending on the translation of the Bible you prefer. And the way we understand this parable is deeply influenced by our perception and our understanding of the society in Jesus' time. You see, the Pharisees in the Gospel are often depicted as the bad guys, Jesus' enemy, the, the one who think of their, themselves as righteous and, and, and not open to Jesus' message. And the tax collector, well, they were Jesus' friends. They were those who followed Jesus, accepted his message. And when we try to find our place in this story, well, we want to be the tax collector. We want to belong to the cool kids, the, the good guys, not those Pharisees that, that are not good enough for us. Well, if we look closely at the context, the tax collector were not good people. In fact, they were despised by almost everyone because they were collecting taxes. And back then as today, not that many people like to pay taxes on top of that. It was not tax for the um, Israelite uh, government, it was for the Roman Empire, the army of occupation, they were collaborator. Just think of how people in the Second World War that was labeled collaborator were treated in view. That will give you, and from what we can understand, their job was to collect the tax for the Roman Empire and they would take their cut from the surplus they will accumulate. And everybody knew about this. Everybody that they will pay themselves from this, so they will pay more taxes. So they were not very well liked and pleasant people. And as for the Pharisees, they were not religious literalists, they were Sadducees. They were the ones who trying to adapt to their, their faith, to the current circumstances and, and find new rules and way to live in today's world and, and look beyond the law. Like a lot of people like you and me that will call, be called liberal. They were good religious people, liked by many because they were religious people. Sorry. Oh. I thought I would sneeze. I'm sorry. And the way we understand this parable, well, the one who is the righteousness who would, is challenged is the people like us. Us, the regular good church people, who want to adapt to the society and think of themselves that they got it right. They're, they're the one whose righteousness is challenged. And it really opened a very interesting door and very challenging one because it confronts us. It confronts sometimes our sense of superiority in, in regard of other people and in, in regard on the rest of the world. Have you ever noticed the way people will talk about, I don't know, the church culture and the secular culture? And how many times do you think that secular culture is better than church culture when those things are brought to the table? Or when they talk about the business world versus the church world? As is the church world or the church culture, always perfect, always great, secular culture, well, business world, well. Or, or when people talk about the church goer and those don't go to church. Well, if you go to church, you're a good person, you have value, blah, blah, blah. On church, atheists, well, atheists cannot be good. They don't have value. Just the way we talk about this way. Or, or liberal versus conservative. Well, liberal look at conservatives and say, well, they're so stupid, you know, they really think that Jesus actually wrote the Bible and conservative look at liberals and blah, blah, blah. It's our sense of superiority. And often we try to 
promote herself by putting other down as if as we cannot all elevate ourselves no 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 as if well if we want to get higher well <clears throat> you have to step on someone to get higher and you have to prove someone by prove yourself by having people below you and that's it's very and once again that's not the secular world it happened in the church world frederick buchner have this very interesting quote, quote when it comes to humility, because that's part of this parable. It's saying humility is thinking of yourself as neither better or worse than you are. Neither better or worse than you are. You don't have to brag and put people down, or you don't have to diminish yourself and looking that someone will lift you up. No, just be who you are acknowledge who we are we have to acknowledge who we are and acknowledge what we do what we don't do our strength our weaknesses and say you know that's what i do at my church for example not because i want to brag or show off this is because what i want to do this is because what i'm calling to do and this is my mistake and I will not flog myself and and these are my mistake and I acknowledge and I will try to improve the sense of humility the sense of acknowledging who we are not to brag not to self depreciate just being what God made us God call us so that's it for this week uh, thank you for watching I'm Stéphane Vermet, I'm the lectionary man, and until the next time we see each other, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.